Hi! Recently it occurred to me that while all of my videos I make are primarily about Newtone intercom systems and Newtone door chimes, Newtone makes a lot of other products. I was made aware recently that a lot of the products that Newtone makes, a lot of you have never seen or don't know about. So I decided that it would be a good idea to make a reasonably short, we'll see how this goes, video about some of the other Newtone products that have been made in the past. A lot of them aren't made today any longer. As a Newtone distributor and a Newtone service center, we were responsible for selling all of these products and also doing service on all of the products. They all carry different warranties. A lot of them had lifetime warranties for this time period. We were responsible for going out in the field and doing service calls at people's houses and we have to know about all the products that they made and the history of the products and where they came from and the things that go wrong and have parts for them and that's all part of being a service center and of course if you're a distributor we used to have a showroom where we would sell products and display them contractors and homeowners would come in and order things we would do home shows and hand out catalogs and talk to a zillion people about Newtone products and we would drag all our displays down to the home show and set them all up and spend three days working like dogs getting the word out. What we have here to start with is this is a full line Newtone catalog. This is a 1992 catalog and this is a good example of the kinds of products that Newtone used to make and the extent of the products that they used to make. You can see here if you look at the spine this is every bit of probably three-eighths of an inch thick. This is a full line catalog. It's a compilation of all the individual catalogs for all the different individual products that they used to make. And it's in one giant book under our sticker. This is our sticker from a long time ago. It actually says up in the corner, it says $3. Because, I don't know, somebody thought that you could charge $3 for it. Nobody ever got $3. In fact, nobody ever got anything for them. You just gave them away for free. When we would do a home show for three days, we would let Newtone know they would participate in helping us be able to do the show. They would ask, how many catalogs do you want? And I would always say, oh, I want like 2,000 catalogs, knowing that... If you were really lucky, you might get 15 or 1600. Sometimes our sales rep would do a good job and he would go around and gather up unused catalogs from all the wholesalers and bring us cases and cases of catalogs. These used to get handed out for free. The advantage to the catalogs were always that people hung on to them. They were probably, for a lot of people, they were like the Sears Christmas catalog when you were a kid. You would keep it, it would be somewhere in your house, you'd bend over the, cor uh, the corners of the pages of the things you were interested in and mark on them and write things on the back. And it would not be uncommon, we would do a sh home show maybe in September or October. There was always a big one in our area. Sometimes people would come in the store nine months or a year later and they'd have the catalog and it'd be all rolled up and it'd been in their back pocket and they and they come in and say, yeah, I'm, I'm was building the, I'm building a house and I'm I'm ready now. You remember me, don't you? And I, yeah, absolutely. I remember talking to you distinctly. So let's take a quick look through our 1992 catalog and see what we have. New tone on the top, and then all the different product categories. We have door chimes, exhaust fans, attic cooling fans, electric heaters, range hoods, paddle fans, central vacuum, food centers, hot water dispensers. We'll talk about that. Pants pressers, we'll talk about that too. Ironing centers, video door answering, radio intercoms, apartment security, bath accessories, bath cabinets, and lighting. How about that? Most of you have at least one of these things in your house and may not know that there are lots of other things that Newtone made. So we'll try not to make this go too long. We're gonna go through rather quickly. So inside what we have, we have essentially the small single product catalog for each category and then it's all bound together in one big full line book so everyone will have its own cover door chimes here you'll notice on here on all the cover pages we have these boxes and pillars and everything is set on there back in those days in 90 this was a new design for 92 for the catalogs and back in 92 and 93 in my store, not only did we have the permanently mounted wall displays, but I actually built cubes and plinths and columns and sort of copied what Newtone did because it gave us some continuity when people would come in and you could put things on it and display it. It was probably kind of wanky, but it was the 90s and it actually went over really well because people used to say that we had a really nice store. Here we have a variety of Newtone door chimes. I have a long tube chime, a Jefferson, a selection of what were called the Masterpiece Doorbell Series, an early wireless door chime. 
And then when we went through here, we have descriptions and pictures of all of the different models. Here we have long and short tube Westminster chimes. And you'll see in a lot of places in the catalog, it says MPP, Maximum Performance Products, guaranteed for as long as you own your home. That was a real thing back in those days. That was one of the best selling tools that Newtown ever came out with. Here we have more chimes. These are two note long tube chimes, some decorative chimes. And the thing about this, one of the things I'm going to point out, we'll do it on this page, is back in those days when Newtone actually cared about what they made and they were a proud American manufacturer that were, was more concerned with the quality of their products and the satisfaction of their customers than, say, they are today. Door chimes in particular, since that was the item that the company was founded on, door chimes all have names because in those days they cared. So here we have the marble tone, which is this one. We have the oak crest, which is this one. We have the ebony, which there's no picture of. I think it's right here, a picture of the ebony here with this sort of crackle glass mirror kind of thing on the front. This was a nice chime. Uh, we had the prism here. We had a Victorian, which is over here. We had the iris, which is this one, which had an iris on the glass panel. This was not a big seller, but they all had names because they were trying to invoke a feeling about it. And throughout the catalog, one of the things that you'll see, there's actually people in the catalog. And there's a little story that goes along and they're painting a picture of what it would be like to own it and have it in your home and make you want to have it, like you want to buy it, you would have some desire for it. And that was the best of times for catalogs. Here we have Newtone Musical Door Chimes. Here's an LB60, which is very 90s looking gal here with all the hair. And she's going to change the song and surprise her husband when he shows up because she's got a big giant wedding ring right there. We have more chimes and even these, these are inexpensive chimes where as you move towards the back of each catalog, you, the, the, the cost per item is less. And here we have what are essentially builder chimes that you would, a, a development home builder might put in the house. We have an LB18 and an LA30 white with a wooden cover. That was a nice chime. An LB12, which is sort of the entry level two note doorbell of the day. But still, you get some nice description. You get measurements. It tells you how it works. Here we have a gal looking through a mechanical chime. Here we have a, uh, a wireless device they used to make that would be for hearing impaired people that would flash a lamp. So if you couldn't hear the doorbell, you could see the lamp flash, which was kind of cool. And here we have doorbell buttons. These fancy brass ones up here on the um, purple velvet for royalty, I guess. These are part of what they called the Masterpiece series. They were extra heavy brass with a, with a really polished finish on it. And they came in these nice boxes with sort of a velvet lined piece of cardboard that it sat on with a clear cover so you could see it. They were very jazzy. They were expensive, but they were very nice. And people bought a lot of them because they liked them. And here we have an early Newtone wireless chime. I actually have one of these and I might do a video about this to show you how much wireless doorbells have changed in the last 25 years. Then we move on to Newtone fans and heaters. Fans include attic fans, whole house ventilators, kitchen ventilation, and we have bathroom fans, bathroom heaters, radiant bulb heaters, and again, everything sitting on this little plinth block in Yes, we did that. And we would move things around too, so it wasn't always the same. I'd get bored and I'd move it all around and put things in different places. And we had the little name plaques you put on there. It was kind of like going to a museum and people would come in and look. So here we have Newtone QT fans. QT stands for Quiet Test. Uh, the Quiet QT series of fans came out in the early 1970s. I think it was 73 or 74 was the first year. And the go-to fans for a lot of builders and electricians were QT80s and QT110s. These right here. Back in those days in the early 70s, a QT80 was rated at 80 cubic feet per minute at anywhere from 
one and a half to two sones depending on what year catalog you were looking at because it seemed to change over time. Sones are a noise rating for bathroom exhaust fan. When the sone rating was first utilized for exhaust fans, the story was that one sone was the sound that an average refrigerator made while it was running in your kitchen if you were standing like six feet away from it. I don't know if that's true, but that's what people used to say. That's what the salesman always said anyway. Here we have a fan light a QT140L which was a nice fan. Here we have some larger ventilation units that could be used for multi-room. We have QT500, 700, and 1000 for 1000 CFM. Shows how you can install it with multi-line ducting and different intake grills and you could use it in an office or something like that. And then we have some decorative fan lights. Now here, this is early 90s so we still had fan lights that had oak grills on them. Here's a round one and a square one. These are all better quality fans so all of the glass in them is all, all the lenses is glass no plastic except for the fluorescent one. The glass in these fans it's what's called moon glass. It doesn't create any shadows. It diffuses the light nicely and moon glass also has a very special and unique feature which is if you drop it on the floor when you're changing the light bulb it's guaranteed to shatter into 100,000 little sharp shards of glass all over your bathroom floor. So you better wear shoes. Here we have a wall mounted fan and again we're moving towards the back of the catalog so things become plainer and less expensive. Some basic fans. Here we have what we later would call utility fans and any of you who have an old house in the kitchen you might have something like this or a round one up on the ceiling above your stove or even on the wall by the stove vent pipe if it's an older house. These were sort of some of the early fans that Newtone first made back in the 50s and they still made them then. And then we have less expensive fans for home developers. And here we have what they call kitchen ventilation. These are not range hoods but these are big ventilation blowers. And we have a couple roof mounted blowers, an RF1, an RF40, and an RF35. And these move the kitchen exhaust fan out to the outside of the house so you would have an intake on the inside. And they also came in wall mounted units. And these are a lot more powerful than average and they kept your house quieter. And here we have Newtone exhaust fan selection chart and all the different model numbers and all of the descriptions and specifications and so on and so on. One of the things you'll notice in catalogs like this is there's no prices in any of these. There were price lists. Newtone used to publish three price lists every year. There was the pink price list, which was retail pricing. There was the blue price list, which was dealer pricing. A dealer would be a business or someone who bought from someone like me, a distributor, and then would have them and resell them again. So he was a dealer because he didn't buy direct from Newtone. And then there was the gold price sheet and the gold price sheet was the distributor price sheet. That would be the price we would pay Newtone when we would make an order. Of course, there were all kinds of back-end deals and other promotions and things that always went on. So most distributors never really paid distributor you always got something off especially if you did a lot of business. Here we have attic exhaust fans. We have an RF68H and an RF69 and an RF49 and a gable exhaust fan. We have humidity sensor, heat sensors that you can hook up to them. In my house at home I have an RF68H. That was one of the best attic exhaust fans Newtone ever made. It's got a motor in it. It's about the size of a washing machine motor. It probably weighs about 12 pounds or more. It's a great huge giant thing. It does a really good job. Mine is about 20 years old now and it works like a champ. Here we have some less expensive attic exhaust fans. Economy. So less money. Not as fancy. Maybe a little noisier, but it's okay. Here we have whole house ventilators. Whole house ventilators, not real big in California. We all have air conditioning, but the basic idea, a lot of you probably have some type of whole house ventilator in your house. And the basic idea is instead of running your air conditioning, or if you don't have air conditioning, you crack open your windows a little bit throughout the house. And this mounts in the ceiling of the house. And when you turn it on, it sounds like a small airplane running in your hallway and it pulls the cool air in or the cooler air from the outside, hopefully it's cooler, into the inside of the house. It creates a big draft and blows it up into the attic and then out the attic venting. Whole house fans, Newton made them for a long time. There's lots of different models. 
This is the WHV 36. This is a 36 inch diameter. I think the blade they used on this used to come off of a Cessna 152 because that's what it sounds like when it's running on your ceiling. And these are very popular. These are very powerful. I remember when I was a kid, my parents had a friend and we were over there in the winter time and she had a fire going in the fireplace and being the eight-year-old that i was i flipped the switch on in the hallway thinking it was the light it turned on the whole house fan and it sucked all the smoke out of the chimney she was not happy so we have those we have electric heaters and this is a wall mounted heater and we have ceiling mounted now heaters are also referred to as heat vent light. Here we have heat event light. So they're combination units. It has an electric heater, it has an exhaust fan, it has a light, and some models have a night light also. Night lights were a newer idea. I think they came out originally in the late 80s or early 90s, and it would have a little four watt night light bulb in it so you could turn it on at night if you had to use the bathroom and you wouldn't blind yourself. Here's a gal, she's fixing her hair and she's enjoying the light and probably the heat. In, the, in her bathroom while she gets ready to go to work. Here we have another gal. She's got her 9965 up here. This was a newer design. This came out actually in 86. It was a rectangular one instead of a more traditional round ones. Newtone had made round heat event lights all the way back beginning in the, I think it was in the late 1950s. Uh, we had the 901, 900s and 901s, and then they evolved over time after that. And then this was a newer idea, the rectangular one. It was more modern. Here we have a, a radiant bulb heater with an exhaust fan and more radiant heaters. Some have exhaust fans and some don't. Some are just bulbs in the ceiling. This is like what you see when you stay at a Motel 6 and you flip it on in the bathroom and it's got two heat lamps in it and you go blind because it's so bright. Here we have some surface mount radiant heaters. These just have a, a heat element in it. I used to have a gal that worked for me. She used to call these milk parlor heaters because when she was a kid growing up, she lived on a farm and they had cows and they had these in the milking area to keep you and the cow warm, I guess. I don't know. These were, in this area where we are, not that popular. We have kick space heaters. They go under the toe kicks in a cabinet. And then we have wall heaters. This was a big wall heater, the 9840. It could put out up to 4,000 watts of heat. So it was for a large room and then smaller ones here. And if we keep going, See, it goes on and on forever. Do you know how good it was to be a Newtone distributor back in those days? You had all of these products to sell. You had them all on display. You got support from the factory. You got support from your sales rep because he was a commission guy and he wanted you to make a lot of orders. You had all of these great things to sell and people would come in and say, I want one of those Newtone range hoods. So here we have range hoods. Here we have the, oops, I think we skipped the page. Nope. All right, so we have an SO9100. This was a big range hood back in the day. It's thicker and taller than average. It's powerful, it's almost 300 CFM. Here we have our exterior blowers again, because it's kind of a crossover, so you, know, you don't want people to miss out on it. Here we have the Continental Series. This was a jazzy idea where the functional part of the hood, this box here was up inside the cabinets where it's hidden. And then you had this, this glass drawer or tray that slid out. And when you pulled it out, it would turn the fan on and the controls were here on the top. These were made by a company in Italy and everybody needs Italian range hoods, don't they? These were, a, not fun to service. To try to get the switches would break and then try to get it apart is bad. The NN8300, this was a really good range hood. Nice little twin scroll cage blower. And then we get down into the more run of the mill kind of stuff. The MM series was nice. And then we have the LL series. LL series were the low end. So we used to say it stands for low, low series because these were inexpensive. Back in this day, you could buy like a white 30 inch hood. I used to have an appliance store that bought them from me. I think my cost on them were like $21. They were very, very inexpensive. So, and then we have paddle fans. Now, Apparently, a lot of people don't call them paddle fans. They call them ceiling fans, but back in the day, they were paddle fans. And Newtown had been making paddle fans. I think the first ones that they made were sometime in the late 60s. They used to have a wide variety of these to pick from. You can see they're very decorative. You could get them with optional lights. 
and here we have, let's see, yep, here we have top performance, the Century model, grand style, and the MPP guarantee. They were sorry they did that, I can tell you. And these are very traditional paddle fans, not ceiling fans, and they have some scroll work on them, and so on and so on. And here we have the Elegance, a more modern design. I actually had two of these in my house, and I put them up brand new. And I can guarantee you that the life expectancy of a Newtone Elegance paddle fan is exactly 12 years. And after that, what happens is the revolving part that the irons and the blades attach to is sort of a rubberized metal ring. It's a metal ring embedded in rubber, so it has some cushion and some give, and then it's clamped to the motor shaft, and it, that's what spins it. On both of my fans, within a week of each other, the rubber and the rubberized metal ring that holds the blades, it sheared and the metal became loose and the blades dropped and hit the hub down here and they weren't connected anymore. And they both failed within, the, within a week of each other. So the life expectancy of a Newtone Elegance fan is about 12 years. Of course, they don't make parts for these anymore, so we bought something else. These also were electronic controlled. You had a wall switch here. You can control the fan speed, the fan direction, the lights, if you had lights on it, and dim the lights all from the control switch. And the control switch talks to the control board in the fan. Through the electrical wiring, it, it communicates that way. It's not a radio signal thing. It's a through the wiring thing. And these were very nice fans. They were very quiet. And if you knew how to balance them properly, if your ceiling was a little off, you could make them run really smoothly. Here we have Veranda 2s. These were very popular because they were very traditional in style and not nearly as expensive. Here we have an overview. Here's the Select Touch. Uh, the Select Touch idea fell out of favor because there was a company, I think they were in Tennessee or someplace, they were the company that made the control switches and the boards that went inside the fans that they worked together. And that company had a mysterious fire at their facility and everything burnt down. The tooling and everything to make the boards and the switches was lost in the fire, so Newtone canceled that idea because they didn't want to invest the money to get somebody else to make it. Here's sort of an overview of all of the quality ideas and parts of a Newtone paddle fan. Here's some other less expensive. Again, as we go towards the back, things become less expensive. And here we have a wide variety of light kits that you could buy to put on your Newtone paddle fan. Light kits, yeah, dining room, over the table, definitely a popular thing to do. In other rooms, it depends, not so much sometimes. And here we have commercial paddle fan. We have the PFC 48 and 56, which is a 48 inch diameter and a 56 inch diameter. These are three blade fans, very much like the fans that you would see outside of a drugstore or a little cafe or coffee shop in your hometown that might date back to the 40s or 50s. You know, that one that runs really slowly above the door when you walk in to keep the flies away. We have two of these in the shop here that we run during the summer to help get, because it's a high ceiling, to get the air circulating around and keep the base cooler without having to run the air conditioning so much. So these work really well. Here we have central vacuum. Back in the day when everything was still red. This is Newtone, this is Firethorn Red, and all tanks up until the early 2000s were Firethorn Red, and then they became white after that, which was very boring. Here we have a gal, she's vacuuming. She doesn't look too jazzed about the whole idea. She's probably got a bunch of messy kids. And here we have a basic concept of how a central vacuum works and what it is. And here we have a very traditional drawing. This is the same drawing of how a central vacuum could be laid out in a home. It's got the tank here in the garage and the black lines are the pipes and it shows how one inlet can cover many areas and so on and so on. And this gal, she just got her central vacuum installed. Could have been by a company like ours. And she seems very happy. Here we have a description of all the different tanks. This was not the first year, I don't think, for the CV450. I think the CV450 came out around, could have been 90 or 91, I don't recall exactly. This was the second twin motor unit that they made. The CV400 was the first one, eh, not so good. This was a very good unit. I have its descendant, I have a CV750 in my house. 
and it's a twin motor just like this one, only it's white, not red. Different sizes, twin motor, CV353, CV350, they become less powerful as you go down. In the store, what we would always have would be these three because where we are, the houses are fairly large and the basic idea was always, you had the biggest, you had the middle, and you had the smaller one, even though there's a smaller one on the other page, but that would be too small for around here. People would come in and technically you choose a central vacuum pretty much based on the square footage of the house and how many stories it has. And for most houses, a CV353 is always more than adequate. It gives you plenty of suction. It's usually anywhere from 40 to 50% more than your average canister or upright vacuum. And it's perfectly suited for most houses. However, you could step up to the 450. And back in those days, the difference in cost you'd be going up about $90. So, you know, if you can get the V8 model for 90 more than the V6, guess what people bought? They bought the V8. It was a good thing. Here we have some new hoses. This, this is a 572. This was a, a new design hose. It had a larger diameter than previous hoses for better airflow. All your accessories, new tone carpet brush. These were made by Eureka and good quality brush. Not a lot of bells and whistles, but they last forever. And it was still back in the day when you got your accessory kit, it came in a little suitcase. You could get the hanger bag like this if you wanted to save a couple bucks, but the go-to thing was the molded plastic suitcase that would open up and everything snapped in its place. People always liked that. The earlier ones, the cases were brown. And we have air driven brush with PVC tubing, talk about all the fittings, make installation easy, and sometimes. And here's the small, small unit, a CV352. This was perfect for like townhouses, small, small homes. Then we have a new idea, drawdown cyclonic. Cyclonic are bagless models. She won't be smiling when it's three years old, that's for sure. Cyclonics are a pain in the neck. They don't require bags, but they require more maintenance because there's a big filter assembly you're supposed to take out and clean every time. And how many people you think actually do that? It's pretty nasty to take it all apart. I remember I had a customer come in once with his wife. They were building a new home. He was explaining to me they wanted a central vacuum, but he wanted a bagless model because he didn't want to have to buy vacuum bags. Like we were forcing him to buy vacuum bags. And I was explaining the disadvantages to the bagless models and the advantages to the bag models. And his wife was standing behind him and she was shaking her head agreeing with me. And he was very insistent about the whole thing. And I told him, here's what we're gonna do. I said, you're gonna buy a bag model from me and I'm gonna give you a case of bags. Now, a case of bags is 18 bags. 18 bags will probably last you 10 years or something like that. And he said, why would you do that? I told him, because I don't wanna have you come back with your bagless model crying to me when it's two years old and it's all clogged up and you can't figure out what to do with it. I'd rather give you the free bags and hear you cry. His wife thought that was a good idea. I got a thumbs up on that one. And yes, we did get the job and we did install it and he never complained about the bag. Although he got them for free, so you know. Here we have built-in kitchen food centers. Food centers, for those of you who don't know, is an in-counter motor appliance center with all kinds of attachments. It's kind of hard to see on this picture here. And again, yes, we had little cubes and yes, we sat food processors on them to show people. We actually had one that was hooked up and would work and sometimes we would use it to show people how you could chop up zucchini or something. Newtone originally came out with food centers, the, the concept of it. It was in the mid 50s. It was a revolutionary idea. You could buy the counter unit. And back in the early days when they first came out, the only attachments were a blender, a mixer, and a knife sharpener. And then over time, they added more and more. Food centers really took off in the late 60s and early 70s when Newtone was purchased by Hamilton Beach. You know, the people that make toasters and things like that. A lot of the attachments, if you look, compare them to Hamilton Beach appliances of that period, you'll see they look very similar because they kind of are. In-counter motor unit, food processor, blender, looks like we're making Bloody Marys here, ice crusher, knife sharpener, juicer, mixer, a juicer, coffee grinder, can opener, shredder, slicer. It was always a great sale. You'd have somebody come in and they'd want one of these and then they would want all of the accessories. A lot of people would only ever have the blenders, but sometimes people would want everything. And then if you sold them everything and they had the space, 
kind of hard to see here. They made these slide out molded plastic trays that would fit in your kitchen cabinet and it had spots for everything and it was all neat and organized. Food centers were good. They fell out of favor primarily because they didn't update the appliances. These appliances in 91 were the same appliances they made at the end around 2003 or four, I think, when it was discontinued. And it fell out of favor because the appliances, the attachments were too old fashioned in their design. And you know, people were spending big money for things like KitchenAid mixers and stuff like that. So these didn't really compare and that's kind of why. Then we have hot water dispensers. One of the bigger flops that Newtone offered. If you think about it, everything that Newtone makes is pretty much an electrical device or appliance. And here we have something that's a water-based appliance. I'm good at a lot of things, but I'm not a good plumber. These weren't actually made by Newtone. They were made by the parent company that owned Newtone by another company they owned. It was an English company. It wasn't good. These were your sort of instant hot, like insincorator kind of things where you had a tank underneath the sink that was plugged in for the hot water. And then the faucet thing here, you can make tea and coffee and junk like that. I never sold very many of them and I hated doing service calls on them. The biggest problem would be you'd have a problem with the faucet and it would leak or there was a over a thermal overload in the tank if it didn't stay filled up with water it would shut the heat element off and then it wouldn't turn back on and they were a disaster i hated those uh, i'm glad that they didn't keep making them more than a few years and now we have newton pants pressers again another product made by another company that was owned by the company that owned newton and somehow we got roped into selling them some of you may have something like this in your house it's a freestanding thing and some fancy hotels have them and you open up the door this building into the wall you open up the door you fold your pants in it you set the timer you close it up and it gets the wrinkles out of your pants I never sold one of these not ever maybe because I didn't have one on display because basically it's a really stupid idea nobody needs this if you want one something like this you're gonna have a freestanding one it's right in there with um, having a shoe buffer I think then we have Newtone built-in ironing centers now ironing centers came out originally in 1986 and it was they weren't the first company to make that in fact a long time ago back in the college days I lived in a place that had a built-in ironing center in the kitchen it was part of the kitchen cabinets the building was probably built in the 30s I would say the one in that house the latch on the door had an S on it for Singer like the sewing machine company so they're not the first company that in, came up with an idea like this but they were one of the ones that made it more popular and what you had here was a very nicely made metal cabinet with a 42 inch fold down board. You had a, a electrical socket for your iron that was controlled by a timer and a light. The board would swivel so you could turn it 90 degrees. And also you could adjust the height of the board. It has three different height settings for taller or shorter people. And see this gal, she's very happy. She just flip it down and can iron a shirt and off she goes. I think she needs to have more colors than blue. She's wearing blue and she's ironing blue. I think she needs some other colors. And there were always a wide variety of doors. You had mirror, raised panel oak, a flat birch. And a lot of times as this was going into a new house, the people would have their cabinet maker make a door custom to the right size that matched the doors in the laundry room or whatever. So it was more cohesive. I actually have a Newtown ironing center in my house. We don't use it a lot, but when you really want to iron something, there is nothing more convenient. You just flip open the door, fold it down, turn on the iron and you're good to go. Uh, when these first came out, Newtone had a promotion. They were giving away a free iron with each one that you would sell for the customer. And of course the irons were made by Hamilton Beach. What a shock. And here we have a more economy model. It doesn't have any electrical, but it's still a metal cabinet, not wood, so it's good. They made some accessories, a little sleeve board for, guess what, ironing your sleeves. Now we have video door answering, and this is a VS1000. This was the very first video door entry system that Newton ever made. You had an inside monitor, a door camera, and a surveillance camera. And this was sort of a revolutionary idea at the time. You could have up to three monitors in your house. You could have, I think, up to 
four cameras total. It could be a combination of entry door cameras or surveillance cameras. And when someone would push the button, it would chime inside on the monitors and the screen would turn on and you could see the uh, delivery guy there and then pick up the handset and talk to him. The buttons on it would allow you to switch it between, I guess, the four different cameras that you would have. This was reasonably pricey. In fact, here somebody wrote, probably me, $548 because that's what it cost, I think, in 1992. It was fairly expensive. It was a unique design. Some of the unique features of it were the door cameras have little infrared light emitters built into them. So if it's dark outside at night and there's no ambient light, it still lights up the person and you can see who they are. That was a revolutionary idea in the, new, in the 90s. Uh, one of the downsides to these nowadays is they, the cameras do fail. The chips in them fail for the camera and they are no longer repairable because the chips aren't made for the chips were made by Sanyo and they don't make the camera chip assemblies any longer. And also back in those days, they're black and white, not color because, you know, color would have been way more expensive. So we have those and then we have Newtone Intercom. We're gonna just whip through this quickly because I have lots and lots of intercom videos. Some of the pages are torn out here. I think I did that a long time ago. So here we have an, a 5006, a different video entry system that goes with the 5006 and some other interesting things. So here we have the VIS video entry system, which is a variation on the VS1000, basically the same unit in a different housing to match the 5006. Lots of information about all of that. A lot of this I have in other videos, so we'll just go through this quickly. We have the 4006 and all of its accessories. 3003, one of the most popular intercoms ever made. Variety of door speakers. 2003, very popular with builders. Our VIS video system. A snazzier looking video door entry speaker camera here to go with this system, not interchangeable with the VS1000. Surveillance cameras, watch the kids at the pool, although they'd be in black and white, so it's not really gonna look like that. Here we have Newtone's first attempt at home control. Back in the late 80s and early 90s, there's a technology, it still exists today, it's called X10. It's wireless communication over power line design, and you could buy a variety of different controllers. You had wall outlet controllers, there were switch controllers, you had programmable timers, handheld remote control, dimmers, and you could install these in place of your wall outlets and light switches and then control them either with the timer, turn lights on and off, or appliances on and off, and you had the handheld remote control. Uh, again, not very popular, very complicated, People didn't understand how to use it. People who did buy it always seemed to have problems with understanding what to do with it. And it went away after just a few years, which was fine. One of the problems with X10 wireless communication is that there's no reply protocol in the design. It sends out a signal to turn on a light switch somewhere, but there's no signal that comes back to say that it actually did turn on. So you don't know if it actually worked or not. And that created a lot of problems uh, to sort of show you the quality of X10 in general. It was very popular to buy at Radio Shack. It was sold under a lot of different names and you could go down to Radio Shack and buy it and do it that way too. So it wasn't a high level thing. Uh, although those systems today still have problems. Here we have a 516 system, IK15, IK25, the little ST1000 Music Center. And now we're into apartment house security. And believe it or not, we're just a little more than halfway through the catalog. So see, see how great it would be to be a Newtone distributor. You have all of these things that you can sell and you have virtually no competition in most of these markets because Newtone is the only company and the leader in all of this kind of stuff. One of the things that people don't know about is that it was back in the late 80s, I think it was 88 or 89 or something like that. There was actually an article in the Wall Street Journal. Newtone was the single largest manufacturer of built-in home electronics in the United States. And if you think about that, that's quite an accomplishment for what was essentially a reasonably small company in Cincinnati, Ohio, made more built-in home electronics than anybody else. So we have apartment house security. We have entrance directories. 
Not a lot to see on apartment house security because most of it you don't see. We have system four, which is the 478 system. We have apartment speakers here, door releases, some gal trying to get into a building to sell Mary Kay cosmetics, more entrance directories. Back in these days, entrance directories were a good business. Newtown Nate started making apartment house intercom systems in the late 1960s. You could custom order directory panels. So this is a three door panel. This one is the speaker and the in use indicator and a postal lock and then rows and rows of buttons. I actually did a project once where there were four entrances to the building and each entrance had a six panel directory and you could also incorporate name panels so you could have buttons and names buttons and names buttons and names and in that building the entrance directory panel it was like five feet across it was huge and you would custom order them and newton would build them for you as you needed especially if it was to replace an older one so that was always a good business to be in we have IK-15s and IK-25s again because those could be used in townhouses, not so much apartments. And now we have Newtone bath accessories. And most of you probably don't know that Newtone used to make towel bars and all different kinds of bath accessories. They also used to have a commercial line, the kinds of things that you see if you stay in a hotel or you stay in like a Motel 6 or something in between. Now we have La Quinta and all of these other kind of places that you can stay. They have the tissue holders and they have the little swing out arms that you have four or five arms that you can hang towels on and they have a coat hook on the back of the door and all of those kind of things. Newton made all that kind of stuff. And this was a, the high time of Newton bath accessories. Here we have the Sovereign series. And the Sovereign series, uh, we talked earlier about the Masterpiece button series with the heavy brass doorbell buttons. Well, this was the, the same idea in bath accessories. We have very heavy duty brass bath accessories, fancy towel bars, towel rings, paper holders, paper holders with covers, Soap dishes, which are brass and ceramic for the dish. Coat hooks, cups to rinse your mouth out when you brush your teeth. And over here, oh, we have a glass shelf, very jazzy. Here we have a fancy arch beveled mirror with little standoffs that hold it to the wall. We had matching wall sconces. I used to have all of this on display. We, would, we built these little vignettes of all of this kind of stuff as if it were in someone's bathroom. And I went down to Macy's and I bought really, really, really super expensive bathroom towels to hang on all of it so it would look really fancy. And the lady at Macy's showed me how to fold the towels like they do in a hotel so it would look really jazzy. That went over really big. And then we have Astrochrome. These are a long time series that Newton made. They used to make light switch and wall plug plates also. These are uh, have these acrylic sort of jewel ends on them. Hallmack by Newtone. See, things are getting a little simpler, but still very good quality, very popular. We have Coronado. Coronado would be a simpler design, but still very nice quality compared to some of the things you would see that was similar, but way less expensive. More Hallmack stuff. They used to make the little pull-out clothesline. You would mount the round part on one side of the room and then the, the hook on the other side, and you would pull the cord out and hook it in so you had an instant clothesline that you could hang stuff on. We had Metropolitan and Tempo. We had gra safety grab bars. Safety grab bars in the early 90s were, again, a newer idea and very popular. Here we have more grab bars. And now we have Newtone bath cabinets. And Newtone had made bath cabinets for a really long time. Here we have a nice selection. This was the fanciest one. This is the Radiance. And this is like the most fanciest beveled mirrored bath cabinet you ever saw. It's got beveled panels on the sides, on the top, the door is beveled. You could get the optional light that matched it with the beveled mirror. It came, there was also a surface mount kit if you couldn't recess it in the wall. And then inside of it, there was a mirror in the back of the cabinet, a mirror on the back of the door, and a concave mirror around one on the back of the door also, which would make you look bigger so you could do your mascara or whatever. And here they show three of them ganged together with the mirrored shelf underneath. 
These two on the ends are surface mount and this is a recessed one in the middle. So they're kind of staggered. And I actually had this display in my store. These things weigh a ton because there's so much glass on it. One of the unique features or problems with these were each individual door only fit that particular cabinet because the door, all of the glass panels would be set into the frame and adhered first. And then the door would be put on the door backing and glued in place. And it was, it was adjusted so it would fit just right and the margins were perfect. But everyone was a little different. So if you had a customer that broke the glass, the new door wouldn't necessarily fit properly and you would have to monkey around with it. So these were very expensive and we sold lots of these. They were very popular. Here we have a double arch top beveled mirror door. Here we have the reflections. This one has its two mirrors. You have the smoke mirror on the outside and the oval mirror in the middle, all beveled glass. Here's a similar one in a different finish. We have these. These are all sort of like art deco-y designs with these routed grooves in the glass. The round one. The round ones always seem like a good idea, but when you put it in a room, it always looks wrong to me. I don't know. The Elegance was very popular. And then we have the Tri-Vistas. Tri Newtone had made Tri-Vistas forever, and Tri-Vistas are either recessed or they can be surface mounted. And basically, it's one big cabinet with three doors that open independently, and uh, some of them have lights and some of them don't. These were always very popular. These are big cabinets. These are sometimes 36 inches across, so they're quite large. Here we have the 264R. These are flush mount, pencil edge, mirror bath cabinets. The idea of these is that when you close the door, the glass door sits flat against the face of the sheetrock, so you can put a fixed piece of mirror in the middle, and when it's they're all closed, it looks like one giant wall of mirror. These were very popular with builders. You'd have builders come in and say, I need six of those because I'm putting two in every bathroom with a mirror in the middle, just like here. And they were great. They were very popular. They had nice style, European style hinges with the push, push to open, push to close latches. So that was very good. More of that. And then some with wooden frames. Here we have this is an ensemble, so you have a surface mount cabinet with sliding doors and the mirror here. This is another one. This has the mirror with a light and doors, white doors. I grew up in a house that had this. And we had the light above it too, I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, one of them used to be called the Commodore, and that was a very popular one. Here we have more and more and more and more. You could get wood door ones that came unfinished and then you could paint them as you would like. And then we have mirrors, not medicine cabinets, just mirrors. If you needed to have a mirror, we had the light sconces. And now we have new tone lighting. How about that? We're getting down to the end here. Here we have track lighting and new tone used to make recess lighting. So here we have, yep, that's the right page. Here we have low pro profile track lighting. And this is actually a more modern catalog than if you went 10 or 12 years before this. Newton made track lighting for a really long time. These are more modern designed fixtures. These are low voltage fixtures. The micro here, the TL216, these are low voltage with the MR16 halogen bulbs in them. These are the lights I had in my store to light up all the displays because I got a really good deal, good deal from Newtone on them because it was for a store and they wanted to help everybody out. So these were very popular. You could get the tracks in black, white, or brass. And then we have more conventional track light finnies. We have the cylinders here, the wall washers, the sphere, because everybody needs a sphere track light fixture because it could be 1970 again before you know it. Back in the earlier days, these are all what are called single circuit tracks. Newtone back in the 70s and early 80s, they used to make three circuit track also, which were taller than these, but you would have three separate electrical circuits within the track. And so you could have, let's say you had a 10 foot piece of track and you had nine fixtures on it, you could switch different sets of fixtures on and off depending on the mood you were setting by how you wired it up. And that was actually a revolutionary idea. 
uh, it fell out of favor after a while, but they made it for a long time. Here we have some more fixtures here, and then a wide variety of connectors that you need to create your track layout and so forth. They had these pendant mounts so you could hang them off the ceiling if you had really high ceilings. You had hooks for things that were heavy and a chain. Just a lot of different configurations that you could make up your track. And here we have Newtone new recess lighting. Newtone made recess lighting again starting in the early 70s. And you know, nowadays recess lighting, you just oh, I run down to Home Depot and buy, buy some Halo or some other kind like that. But back in these days, these were very popular. I never sold a lot of lighting fixtures, but this is more for the electrical wholesale side of the business. And guys would come in and they'd be building a house and they'd order, you know, 20 or 30 cans. Nowadays, they put 20 or 30 cans in one room. But you had a wide variety. You had some that were for over the shower proof. You had ones that could be insulation, covered with insulation, other ones not. So very popular. Under the counter fluorescent lighting, that was a very popular thing also. Uh, before this, Newtone used to make a lot of surface mount, what we'll call kitchen light box fixtures. And they were like big fluorescent light assemblies with two or four four foot tubes in them that you'd put on your kitchen ceiling and things like that. But that was before this catalog. So you can see 1992, it was a really, really good time to be a Newtone distributor and to be a new tone service center. Now I said this was going to be short. I actually set a timer over there to keep track and it's been nearly an hour. Sorry, but that's how long it takes to go through a new tone catalog. I'm kind of hoarse now and it reminds me of when we used to do home shows and you talk to like one million people over three days about all this kind of stuff and it was great and you do if you did home shows on a regular basis people would come back again and again and again and oh I was hoping the new tone guy was going to be there and uh, I need a new I need a new catalog what's new 1992 the best of times and not only to sell the products and to talk to people about the products and display the products, but also as a service center, we had to know how to fix all these things. We had to know how to fix food processors and we put hinges on ironing centers and we'd service door chimes and you had to know how to balance paddle fans and you go put motors in exhaust fans and put thermal protectors in heaters and change switches on range hoods, adjust doors on medicine cabinets so it would close properly. There was just so many things that you had to know how to do and Newton relied on people like us to be able to take care of the products out in the field because that built a reputation for them. Nowadays, it's not like that anymore. Nowadays, they just see service centers as a necessary evil, or maybe it's an unnecessary evil. I don't know. You know, they would rather send you a brand new doorbell and have you put it up themselves if you think the one you bought is defective, than have a guy like me go out and fix it and make good rapport with the customers and have people be happy and people go, oh yeah, well, you know, Newtone's a really great company and I, I knew they would take care of it if there was a problem. You know, or people come back to my store and we'd set up a service call and go out and fix it. This is an overview of the best of times of what Newtone used to make. Nowadays, what do they make today? Doorbells, kind of junky, exhaust fans, boring, no attic fans, some electric heaters, not very many, range hoods, yes, but nothing, eh, range hoods. No more paddle fans, they make central vacuum, they're garbage. No more food centers, no hot water dispensers, no pants pressers. They make one irony center, it's made out of wood and like really give me a break. Uh, video door answering, no more of that. No more intercoms, no more apartment security, no bath accessories, no more bath cabinets and no more lighting. So what are we down to? We're down to commodities. We're down to the boring stuff. And I can guarantee you nowadays, the doorbells that they do make, they don't have any names. And they don't tell a story when they try to sell you one. They just tell you it's cheap and it works and you know, you can go buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot and that'd be great. So anyway, that's how the world has changed since 1992. I hope you found this interesting and maybe for some of you in some ways it might be helpful. If it is and it was, give it a thumbs up because that makes us feel like what we're doing is worthwhile. If you like this kind of video, leave comments down below in the comment section. You know, write comments and click save and then I'll respond to them and let me know if you like these kind of videos because not everything has to be intercoms and doorbells. There's lots of other things you could make videos about if people are interested. There are some other products also that aren't in this catalog that I have that I may make a video about. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. I'll have to wait and see what you all say. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. 
go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.